snipers, feared, loathed and admired. But let's skip the narrative, since you're here for some hands-on information. Thus, I took a look at two books. First, the US Army Field Manual 23-10, Sniper Training from 1994. And second, the book Snipers at War and Equipment and Operations History by John Walter from 2017. So before we start, a short definition. A sniper is a specially equipped, highly trained expert rifle marksman, skilled in camouflage and land navigation, field craft and gathering information, and is capable of delivering highly accurate long-range fires to create casualties among selected enemy personnel. The most important part here is probably selected enemy personnel. In short, snipers engage very selectively. Let's start off with the field manual. Under personal selection criteria, it is noted that the candidates for sniper training should be screened carefully. Commanders must screen the individual's record for potential aptitude as a sniper, the rigorous training program and the increased personal risk in combat require motivation and the ability to learn a variety of skills. Aspiring snipers must have an excellent personal record. Furthermore, there are three specific sections with further criteria. Basic guidelines, important qualifications and the prerequisites for attending US Army Sniper School. So let's look at the basic guidelines. The first point, probably unsurprisingly, is marksmanship. The trainee must be an expert marksman, indicated by repeated qualifications. Competition and or extensive hunting background might also be an indicator. Next is physical condition, since snipers are often deployed in extended operations that limit access to sleep and or water. Good health means better reflexes, better muscular control and greater stamina. The self-confidence and control that come from athletics especially team sports, are definite assets to a sniper training. Now the third point is quite foreseeable, it's vision. A sniper is required to have 20 out of 20 vision, or it should be correctable to 20 out of 20. Although it is noted that glasses are a liability, since they can get lost or damaged. Additionally, it is noted that color blindness is also a liability, since it limits the sniper's ability to detect concealed targets that blend in with the surroundings. The fourth point was quite a bit of a surprise to me. The sniper should not be a smoker or use smokeless tobacco. The reasons listed are that smoke can give away the position. Additionally, a smoker's cough is also a danger to the sniper. And even if he abstains smoking or tobacco in mission, his refrainment may cause nervousness and irritation, which lowers his efficiency. The fifth criterion is named mental condition, which seems a bit open at first, but it is cleared up rather fast since it is stated that the commander's job is to determine if the person in question will pull the trigger when necessary. There is also a follow-up sentence that notes that the important traits to look for are reliability, initiative, loyalty, discipline and emotional stability. The final point is intelligence, since a sniper is required to acquire a wide range of skills, ranging from ballistics, navigation, radio operations, identification, collecting military intelligence, to adjustments of optical devices and many more. Now so much for the basic guidelines. The next section is about important qualification and notes that snipers must be self-reliant, display good judgment and common sense, since they are often deployed independently for longer durations. Thus two important qualifications are required, emotional balance and field craft. Now first emotional balance, which is well quite interestingly described. Emotional balance. The sniper must be able to calmly and deliberately kill targets that may not pose immediate threat to him. It is much easier to kill in self-defense or in defense of others than it is to kill without apparent provocation. So keep that in mind the next time you tell someone that you think that they are an emotional balanced person. Additionally, it is stated that anxiety, remorse and similar emotions are no-go as well. The sniper should be capable of cold rationality. Compared to emotional balance, Feecraft feels rather benign and is also outlined without specific details. The potential sniper should be familiar and comfortable in a field environment. Thus he should have an extensive background in outdoors and natural environments, since this will support him in his tasks. The final section is basically a checklist for the commander that need to be fulfilled in order to attend the US Army Sniper School. These include some technical and or administrative points as well. So I will only point out the ones I found most relevant and interesting. These are as follows. No history of alcohol or drug abuse. A volunteer with commander commendation. No record of disciplinary action. And well, the very first point on this list from 1994 is male. 
Now the field manual deals mostly with the raw prerequisites of the human resource. Whereas John Walter in his epilogue chapter titled What Makes a Sniper talks about the whole picture or the final product. He notes, even the most cursory investigation of the strengths and weaknesses of snipers confirms that almost without regard to error, the core values remain much the same. Since I love to organize everything, I divided the elements into three main categories, physical background, mental background and experience. Note that these are broad categories and there's certainly an overlap. Let's start with the physical background. Similar to the US Army Field Manual, eyesight or visual acuity is rather high on the list. There's actually a measurement for this, namely the ability to resolve minutes of an angle at a distance. Now a minute is 1 60th of a degree, but to make it easier it is about 1 inch at 100 yards, according to the National Shooting Sport Foundation. So in this case a lower value is more accurate, since 0.75 would mean you could resolve about 0.75 inch at 100 yards. Whereas the regular eye can only achieve 1 inch at 100 yards. Servets did some testing in the 1960s on hundreds of their marksmen and on average she had around 0.572 minutes of an angle. Yet it seems it increases with experience. Snipers with 2 years experience had around 0.704 more. Whereas snipers with 10 years of experience achieved 0.602 more. This discrepancy and the universal better than average visual acuity for the group explain why the best snipers have always had a reputation for seeing things that their colleagues do not. Another aspect is physical fitness, which should be at peak condition. Yet additionally to the field manual, it is also mentioned that the ability to sustain minor wounds without performance drops is an important aspect. Now let's move to the mental background. A certain calmness in general is quite important for a sniper. Since this will allow the sniper to regulate his breath more easily. Precision shooting and excitement don't really work together. Thus a perfect candidate on the range might turn out to be unfit for the field, since he might get too excited in a combat situation. Remember emotional balance from the field manual? This is also mentioned. Something that can rarely be predicted however is the reaction of a sniper when faced with a first human target. For many the natural reaction is to hold fire. One important mental criterion which some may easily forget is patience. And it is important in various scenarios. For the lack of a better term I would call the following tactical patience. It has not been unusual for snipers to remain motionless for long periods, if they have taken position at night for example and are waiting for sunrise to blind the enemy. And this one operational patience. Missions were often aborted, even after prolonged observation simply because the sniper's target was impossible to define with certainty. It was far better to try another day than take a chance. The final category is about experience, either to do life, training and or combat. One important aspect is the proper searing of the rifle. This means that the scope is correctly aligned so that the shot hits where the sniper aims. Additionally over time due to knocks, mounting and demounting the sights, recoil and other interferences, the searing might not be correct anymore. One major challenge here is that searing a rifle at the front line can be quite tricky or outright deadly. Now since we live in the 21st century, diversity is of course of major importance as well. In case of a sniper, this means that he should have experience at shooting at various angles, ranges and other circumstances during training, since static targets are rare on the battlefield. The reproduction of enemy trenches and positions was and is also crucial, because to shoot at an enemy, one must first spot the enemy. This is also related to the ability to properly observe, which includes noting and remembering differences. For instance, is that window more open than before? Did the number of crates change? And other points. Since one also wants to deny the enemy observation rights, concealment is crucial. This is of course highly dependent on the mission and the overall situation. There is concealment of the position itself, for instance in the trenches of World War I, but there is also personal camouflage covering the helmet with leaves and twigs or the rifle with rags in order to break its symmetry. Generally, the ability of the sniper not to be seen was and is crucial up to this day. Besides sniping from defensive positions, there is also offensive sniping, which involves approaching a target. This includes scouting and knowing the terrain, deciding on the best route, evading enemy positions and other aspects. 
This stalking skill also is important once an offensive mission is completed and a sniper team needs to return to the friendly lines. A shot is only really successful if the sniper, observer and any associated personnel can withdraw safely to their own lines. Consequently, not only is it essential to plan the approach, but it's equally important to plot the escape in such a way that the retreating team cannot be seen. Well, I hope you liked this short introduction to snipers. A big thank you to Naval Institute Press here for providing the book Snipers at War for free. As always, sources are linked in the description. And if you like this content, consider supporting me on Patreon. Remember, every dollar helps improving my content. Now, if you want to get a better vantage point, you probably should check out my video on the flag towers. Or maybe Rommel is of more interest to you. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time.